question for uh, Coach Hamilton. Please just use the raise hand tool and we'll get to as many as we can here in the next 10 minutes. And we will go to Kurt Weiler first. Go ahead, Kurt. Hey, Leonard, hope you're well. I was just wondering, talk about uh, Anthony Polite. Uh, he's obviously been a guy, he's that fifth year guy. He's been around for a while. Just, what can you say about his uh, his growth as a, as a leader, just the development he's made kind of in that capacity? Well, Anthony has been fortunate enough to have been on a team with some really outstanding leaders. And then, and so he's always had kind of a support role. And so now he's put in a position now where he has to exercise uh, his position as a, a, one of the elder statesmen on our team. And that's a challenge, that's an adjustment that, that guys go through. I have to say he's, he's leading by example. He's such an unselfish guy that we've had to prod him in to be a little bit more aggressive offensively. We all know he rebounds and defends very well, but he's unselfish, he tries to be a team guy. And on this particular edition of the Seminole basketball, we need him to be a little more aggressive offensively than what he's been in the past. And that's a little bit of a challenge for him. Uh, Connor O'Neill, go ahead. Uh, speaking a little bit about developing and, and kind of prodding to be an offensive presence, uh, what has been the growth for Malik Osborne? What's helped him kind of take this next step into being as efficient as he's been this year? Malik has probably been more challenged because we kind of bounced him back from a perimeter position to an inside post position. And when Tenoy Tagon uh, came down with the injury, that moved him, you know, back to the five, not because of anything other than we just need some experience at that position. And the, our, our quote five or center, whatever you call it, position is, is probably more key to us than, than it is in a lot of other situations. He sets the tempo, sets the screens, or he does the dribble handoff, and it's a little more challenging. So bouncing back and forth, being one of our better perimeter shooters, and then not really being an inside guy so has been somewhat challenging to him. But he has just tried to give us whatever he, he, he felt we needed in order for us to be successful. It's not easy being a leader when you have, what, six or seven first-year players who are learning the system. So, I mean, he's, he's, he's doing double time and from a leadership standpoint because he's, he's dealing with the perimeter guys and the inside guys and trying to set the tempo for effort and uh, system and – and 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 how, uh, how we play. So it, it's he's been a, <laughs> he's been kind of his his leadership skills have definitely been challenged. I will go next to Benjamin Meyerson. Go ahead, Benjamin. Hey, coach. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I just wanted to ask you about uh, Cam Fletcher. I, I know he had his uh, a really good offensive game, uh, but I was wondering if you could talk about his defensive versatility. Um, it seems like he fits really well in your system where you guys switch so much. Well, Cam is definitely in a learning mode, uh, learning our system uh, offensively and defensively. I mean, he has a tremendous amount of energy, and, and, and he makes a few mistakes because he's kind of a risk taker and, and he's an aggressive, confident guy. Um, he's only scratching the surface of what his potential could be. Um, but to his credit, he's been really working hard and just learning the terminology. Uh, he's studying film. He's working with the uh, visit with the coaches and talking with the upperclassmen on a regular basis, just trying to, you know, to gain as much knowledge so that when he goes out on the court, uh, that he's, you know, he's pretty efficient. You know, I look up many times and I have four and sometimes even five first year players on the floor at one time. That's the complete opposite from the way we have been. You know, a few years ago, we, we worked Devin Sale. He was the only guy. Then it was Patrick Williams and, and, then, and, and then Scotty Barnes. Those guys didn't have to worry about leading other guys that were inexperienced. Now, the, the inexperienced guys, the first-year guys, outweigh the guys who are, are the veterans. And it's presenting a little bit of a, a, a challenge for all of us to kind of mix this level of this 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 team together and we're making progress though i love the team love the attitude but um you know cam falls into that category where you know he's learning on the fly with some other guys and you know you know the, the, the pause and all that factors in you know i have to say i'm very pleased with with, with where he is 
Uh, we'll go to the Orlando Sentinel. Uh, go ahead and identify yourself and then go ahead with your question, please. Matt Rochelle from the Orlando Sentinel. Orlando Sentinel, excuse me. Good morning, Leonard. How are you doing? Good morning. I wanted to ask, uh, you talked about those first year players and kind of challenges you met there. You, you were off for maybe a couple of weeks. You had challenges missing games for a couple of weeks. How has that kind of helped with the chemistry? How were you able to kind of handle chemistry? And how has that kind of maybe helped with your conditioning as well with some of these younger players? Well, it definitely has not helped with the conditioning because we, we you know, we missed, uh, we hadn't played for 17, 18 days. And then those days we did work out. We did have some opportunity for them to be in the gym one on by themselves, one on zero, getting shots up and challenging them to get a little exercise. And then I think we, prior to this game against North Carolina State, I believe we had three days where we had a full complement of all our players together, as opposed to, you know, a few here and a few there. So, but everyone, we all are going through those, this challenging period, dealing with the, uh, the, the virus. Um, it's been kind of a moving target. You know, I hear some guys say they only test when, they have symptoms, but, you know, I had it and I had no symptoms. So, you know, how do you keep everybody safe? And you concern, I'm concerned about that, the after effects and the long-term effects. So, you know, we've been probably been a little more, we test a little bit more than maybe some other people only because, you know, I just wanted to make sure we were on top of our game. So we, we've had fewer practices and we've been a little more limited and maybe than some people, or maybe I, than what we should have been. Uh, so conditioning wise and all of the above, we'll, we, we, we have a ways to go right now. Uh, next question comes from David Teal. Go ahead, David. Leonard, did you apply any lessons from last season to how you managed this most recent 17 days without a game? We tried to be more conscious of the fact that these guys were going through a very stressful period. And, and I tried to understand, be a little more tolerant, and then communicate more with them, dealing with the frustrations of not being able to go home for Christmas and you know, not being having a chance to spend time with your loved ones, and then being isolated. Sometimes you contract trace, and sometimes you, 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 you isolate yourself. You know, we just tried to communicate more because each kid comes from a different place mentally and emotionally, and you can't just make one statement that covers everybody. So we, we've communicated more. We tried to be a little more conscious. We tried to provide uh, isolation opportunities for those guys, you know, to, uh, you know, to at least try to, to maintain some level of contact with the game, more Zooms, more conversations. And um, it, it, these, these are different type of times we're going through. And I can imagine 18, 19, 20 years old, what I would have been thinking if I'd have been as isolated and not having the opportunities to participate like these guys have over the last couple of years. And, and given all that coach, are you pleasantly surprised by how well you played in Raleigh? Well, you, we played well enough to blow the game out by two points. It was an ACC blowout by two. And uh, that, but what I'm saying to you, as a coach coaching inexperienced guys who have not practiced very much, who's had a pause, I'm not real sure I can say how well we played. We played well enough to win, but in terms of coming close to being as efficient in our system offensively and defensively as we normally have been, I'm not real sure I can put a, 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 a plus on that. We we were coaching to make sure now we we got a bunch of youngsters out here who are not quite sure. So let's keep this simple. Let's do this. Let's do that. Trying to accommodate where we are from an execution standpoint. We're a long ways away from being what we've been. Understandable. But that's how you grow. That's how you improve. You, you play the games. You make mistakes. You correct them. And, and, and I was just very, very fortunate to come away with a victory. Leonard, that's all the time that we have for you today. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. We'll you see know. you next week. Thank you.